Well, we've seen Bitcoin pushing above that $60,000 level in the run up to the launch of this ETF. Our next guest says this could trigger a Bitcoin rally with the digital currency soaring to $168,000 that year end. Let's bring in Sean Farrell, Fundstrat head of digital asset strategy. Sean, you certainly got my attention when I saw $168,000. Walk me through your thesis. Hey, Akiko. Uh, first off, thanks for having me. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people saw our head of research, uh, Tom Lee's note yesterday, um, citing the potential for over upwards of 50 billion of inflows in the first year of, um, you know, Beto's uh, trading history. And, you know, I think the whole premise is based on um, the fact that a lot of people are discounting uh, the unmet demand right now for exposure to Bitcoin in traditional fin financial markets. Um, I'm, you know, I don't recall where I saw this number, but I think somewhere around $24 trillion of assets being managed by professional uh, financial advisors and financial planners uh, don't have, you know, frictionless access uh, to Bitcoin at the moment. Um, and if we step back and just surmise that perhaps a few bips of that $24 trillion of capital uh, you know, is allocated to a Bitcoin, uh, albeit futures-based ETF, you know, we're, we're looking at, at hitting that $50 billion figure pretty easily. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, so far, the day one trading volume, I think, has, has impressed a lot of people from what we were just talking about there in this ETF, given the fact that, you know, it wasn't the same as owning spot Bitcoin outright. It's you got to deal with some issues here, but it's baby steps. And I suppose, you know, Bitcoin's prices always move a little maybe more volatile than what the news suggests. We saw that on the downside here when we were talking about China cracking down on mining. So maybe not completely unexpected to see a big pop today. It's granted not a huge pop, but Bitcoin moving uh, up today off of the launch of the ETF. I mean, how soon is too soon to call uh, this being as big as people are talking about? You know, it's, it's one day of inflows, but I mean, how does it fit into the longer team thesis you have of, of that enthusiasm maintaining itself? Yeah, Zach. I mean, it's. I think when you look at whether it be this ETF approval, um, you know, a, the adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender by a sovereign nation, um, these are all just fundamentally huge steps uh, in the um, you know development of Bitcoin as an asset and crypto as an asset class. Uh, just to to push back on your volatility comment, I, I think. Uh, one thing I would I would probably criticize about that is that we've actually seen uh, Bitcoin's volatility over the past one, two, three, five years gradually dampen. Uh, I think five years ago the annualized daily volatility was around eighty percent, uh, and these days it hovers between you know forty and fifty percent uh, depending on the day. And you know there are certain uh, you know heavily traded. Um, equity securities and traditional markets that, that probably mirror that, that kind of volatility. So, mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at, you know, risk adjusted returns, Bitcoin right now presents uh, an unprecedented opportunity for, uh, you know, tra traditional uh, financial markets. And I think that this ETF really opens the gates for a lot of capital to come in and, and gain exposure to, to that opportunity. Let's talk about uh, maybe some more volatility out there. If, if people are getting bored, you know, tongue in cheek a little bit here with the volatility of Bitcoin. But your note cited, uh, you know, what we've seen this year, at least in, in Ether's price moves. And we've been talking a lot about Bitcoin's dominance, of course, the market cap percentage that it takes up in the total cryptocurrency space. We've seen that fluctuate and come down quite a bit. It's been building momentum as of late. But when you kind of look at maybe where Ether goes in all this, uh, and you guys have a $10,000 price target, if I'm correct there on Ether. Uh, talk to me about what maybe what we're seeing right now in, in Bitcoin's dominance coming down could mean for a setup in Ether's rally to, to end the year as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, what we've, what we've seen in, in prior bull market cycles for Bitcoin is that Bitcoin generally leads the rally uh, capital rotates, you know, investors take their gains and rotate into altcoins, uh, the, the most predominant um, heavily traded altcoin being Ethereum. 
Uh, so normally that garners most of the, the rotated capital. Uh, so generally, uh, ETH, Ethereum follows Bitcoin's move. Uh, and quite frankly, we think that a lot of people are overlooking Ethereum uh, into the end of the year just due to the fact that Bitcoin has garnered uh, the lion's share of headlines. Um, you know, it's, it's not, you, you don't meet uh, the average investor that is aware of uh, recent software updates uh, in the Ethereum network. Uh, recently, they updated uh, the network with um, what was called EIP-1559, uh, in which transaction fees are actually burned, uh, causing a disinflationary effect. And what we've seen with the recent NFT craze is that all of the uh, non-fungible tokens that have been minted and traded on the Ethereum network uh, have actually led to uh, a... Um, a rapid increase in the amount of Ethereum supply burn. So we're actually seeing uh, both sides of the supply and demand uh, equation mm -hmm. have these accretive effects on price uh, where there's a lot of demand for ETH and uh, simultaneously the, the supply is growing at a much slower rate. Uh, and think, yeah. you know, we think that once some more capital rotates into ETH, we're going to see um, uh, some bullish price action for, for Ethereum going into the end of the year. I think that that's uh, probably an important point to highlight here as we wrap up, just because, you know, we've talked about maybe if NFTs are a bubble, even if you think that they're a bubble, uh, it does play into the idea that you're talking about there in terms of ETH being burned as you kind of move down uh, those changes there to the network itself. I mean, is that maybe one of the take-home points you'd have for investors who might not be into the idea of NFTs staying as hot as they are right now? Yeah, absolutely. If if you're not if you're unsure about NFTs as a asset class, uh, I mean, first, you know, I would probably uh, advise you to just research NFTs uh, a little more. You know, we're covering them more uh, at Fundstrap and FS Insight, so you can follow us there. Um, but you know, it's a pretty broad uh, terminology that covers any non fungible uh, asset that is secured by a blockchain and and I think there's there's a lot of potential for NFTs as an asset class moving forward. Um, but that said, if, if you want exposure to NFTs as an asset class without, uh, you know, having a granular understanding of uh, which, you know, JPEGs you should be putting into your portfolio, uh, you can achieve exposure to the you know, NFTs through purchases of, of Ethereum. Um, so that's that's certainly something to keep in mind.